Hey, hey, creatives! First, sorry I'm using this filter. The lighting in this room this morning is so bad that this was the only way I could make that light look like the light was actually on. <laughs> but, we're watching part two today of the mountain and lake videos, so stick around till the end, mm -hmm. and I hope you guys enjoy. Bye! Okay, guys, so we're just going to make a flat top mountain right up here. So, mix a little charcoal and ultramarine blue together, and it'll give us this almost black color. And we're just going to start shaping out our mountain here. And I'm using a round 16 brush. You can use whatever brush you like most for these types of outlining. This one's my favorite. Personally, I use it almost every time I'm outlining something big. If I'm going to outline something smaller, I'll still use a round brush, but I'll use like maybe an 8. Um, but now we're going to do our other mountain over here. This one's going to be a little bit more of an interesting shape. It's going to kind of be at like a sharp angle and this one's going to be a little closer to us so i brought it down just a little bit and you can use that same brush or a different brush really when it comes to painting there there's not really a right or wrong way to do it um you can use the same brush throughout the entire piece if you have the skill for it Honestly, the different brushes are really just to make things smoother and easier and get the right looks and textures, but you honestly don't have to switch between 500 brushes to get the look you want. <laughs> it's fun, don't get me wrong, but it's not necessary. So I'm just going to add a little extra bit down here at the bottom. I don't want to make it look like this mountain has a couple edges and layers. Now switching back to the other one, I think I'm going to bring the mountains down a little bit more. Just kind of cover up some of that pink because when we put our water down here, the pink under the blue is going to be, it's not, it's not going to work. <laughs> so let's fill out these mountains, get a little closer here for you. And then I'm just mixing that same color from before um, in video part one. It's that dark blue, the dark gray, and a touch, just a tiny bit of green. And I'm just going to kind of clean up these mountains, drag up this darker color, this little bit of shadowy spots down here, and pull it up into the mountain just a little bit, so it's not just like a black bar down here. I'm going to clean up these edges a little bit. And when I got to this point here, so as some of you probably have noticed by now, I changed my mind throughout the painting process. And this technique that I'm about to do is erasing basically the paint. You take a flat brush that's a little damp, no color on it, and you basically just drag the wet paint off. So you'll constantly go and get it wet, clean it off, and then just kind of wipe the paint off. And then here, for some reason, my camera stopped working, and so I just kind of dragged down a little gray into that water, where the water's going to be. That way, it'll give it a little bit more of a shadow. And so I pulled the two corner mountains out to give it more depth. Now for this mountain that I'm working on, we're just going to do some layers here. And we're going to have our darker color on the bottom, so we're still mixing with our same colors, uh, but not, not using black. We don't want black. So we're going to make a dark color using a dark blues and grays. 
So the lighter you want it, the more gray you went in it, and the darker you want it, the more blue you put in it. And I mixed three different colors. So I have mostly gray with just a touch of blue, and then a little less gray, a little more blue, and then that bottom layer that's going to be closest to the water is a little gray, mostly blue. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other mountain when we get over there. I decided to pull this one down just a little more. Okay. And then, yeah, don't worry if you cover up things you painted before, because sometimes the process changes. I wasn't originally going to have this mountain right here, but I feel like it fits better here. So throughout the painting process, if you feel like something should be somewhere else, feel free to change it. Remember, this is your painting too. I'm going to say it every time. Don't forget to get your edges. Remember, if you're leaving it unframed, you want it definitely get the edges. If you're going to frame it, you can do whatever you want. But if you're leaving it unframed, get those. Okay, so now we're switching to our blue. I have made a couple different mixes of blue. This top part here is mostly ultramarine with a little bit of turquoise. Just the tiniest amount, like you can't even tell that there's any in there. But just to lighten it up a bit. We're just going to get into the cracks here. I'm using a angled brush for this one. We're just going to kind of fill in. And then remember, your sun is setting behind you. So, the further you get down on the canvas is where the most of your light's going to be. So everything up here is going to be fairly dark. Especially right up at the mountains. And we're just going to kind of fill in some spaces. Feel free to mix a couple different blues as you go with the water changing. I added a little lighter blue as I came down. I added a little tiny bit of white as I came down as well. Here, let me get a better angle. And... Right under the mountains is going to be your darkest, so make sure that when you're painting the rest of this down here, that that color is darker there than anywhere else. Get those sides, blend it out, and make sure you're kind of blending smoothly so there's no, like, lines Okay, now I'm going to kind of trace out where I'm going to put my little island. I'm using an angle brush again. I'm just trying to get the idea of where I want this to be. So this is just a little rough sketch, if you will. And there's pretty much no paint on my brush, as you can tell. I rinsed out most of it, but left a little tiny bit of blue in the brush, so I can try to dry this out. I'm getting a fill for it by adding a little detail. And once you like it, you can go back to painting your lake around it. And then we'll fill in the island later. And add some layers of different colors as you go down and blend them up a little bit and throughout just so it gives the water a little bit more depth.
here is where I'm going to add most of my light. I feel like this is kind of where some of the reflection will shine brighter with the way I have my sun setting. And then just keep filling in the rest of the canvas around the little islands we're making. And just get some highlights and lowlights in your water here. And we're going to make the water a little darker around our islands for shadows. Mostly shadow up front, but you can add a little shadow in the back as well. Casting down from the mountain and the trees that we're going to add here. But most of your shadows will be up front since the sun is behind us. Make sure to get your edges and keep filling in the rest of your spaces. Remember to kind of mix your different shades of blues in here. We want a variety. Not too much of a variety though, so be careful. We just want to make it look like there's some depth and some texture to our lake. We'll fill in this last little bit here. Then we'll add a little more detail to the water after. Don't forget to keep rinsing off your brushes and changing out your water. We want to make sure that everything is nice and clean and ready to go for the next parts. So now we're going to mix a little of our blue and some actually sparkly white. Um, if you don't have sparkly white, you can just add a little glitter to white or just use white. But this gives it a little extra shine and shimmer. Okay, and then we can just go in and add a little bit of details in here. I'm using a detail brush. 
Um, you can use any small brush, but I'm just getting the littlest bit on my brush and making a few waves and bumps here and there just to give it a little bit more depth. The more details you add, the more depth it gives your painting. I'm adding most of these details in the lighter portions of the lake that we have here, just so it looks more like a reflection than anything else. Okay, so I'm switching to a smaller feather brush and getting the lightest bits of that color on and I'm just kind of smoothing out those sharp lines and blending them in a little bit more. So the ripples kind of fade into the lake next to it. Okay, and for the islands we're going to use our yellow, our chrome green, and a little violet. And we're going to just put those on our palette here and kind of mix these colors together. To start off here, kind of mix equal parts of each color. And we're just going to kind of add it to the top here. We're going to make it a little darker. We're going to come in with a little bit more yellow and violet in certain areas after. And then we're going to cover the top of it with greenery. So right now you're just making the base of the island. Really the dirt is what you're painting here. So don't worry if your color looks a little weird or unpretty. Right now it's just outlining and shaping and filling in really our, our little island. And then I'm going to take mostly that yellow, the little green, and kind of just shape out the sand here. Kind of how I want this hill to start forming. And then I may come over it a little bit more with some greenery. So it doesn't look too sharp. Then we're going to mix a little bit of purple into that color. Just kind of darken up some of these spaces here. Same with the second island over here. Don't forget to keep your brushes clean. Just kind of Fill in your spaces here and start shaping out your islands. This is where you're going to decide how the islands really form, which ways they're falling, if there's a little hill, all that good stuff. So take your time with it. Make sure you like how it's looking. If you need to, take a step back and kind of just gauge the way it's looking here and keep going, keep filling in. I'm using mostly a purple and green mix on this side right now, so I want it to be fairly darker and I don't want to pull in too much of that yellow right now. I want it to look like dirt and dark shadowy grass. Okay, then you can make a little blend of cream and that yellow, we're just going to lighten up our sand here and start shaping out our hill. And 
and I'm using a feather brush and a round brush. Feather brush to shape, round brush to blend, just so there's no sharp lines. And whatever motion you're using with your feather brush, use that same motion with your blending brush. I'm adding a little dark notch on this second island because it's gonna put a little hill, little depth into this one. Now, if anywhere's too light, you can get some of that yellow, not blended with any other colors, just as it is, and kind of darken up a few little places, add a little more shadow, especially if you're doing that little notch, that little tuck. Get a little bit more there than everywhere else. And then start shaping out that little space. We want it to look like it's shadowed and tucked in. Now take some dark green and kind of fill that spot out a little bit. You can blend it with the violet to help shape it a little bit more so it blends smoothly. Now we're going to use our feather brush and take some chrome green, bright green, and grass green and kind of add a little detail and texture to this. You can blend the colors together however you want to form the shades that you want. Um, but remember to shadow where you need shadows. And if you're going to be adding trees, think about where those trees are going to go. We can always add some shadow, some more shadow later. But right now, kind of be thinking of your next couple steps. I'm going to have the fronts a little bit darker than anywhere else. To shadow where my trees are going. So I'm blending the chrome green and the bright green together a little, quite a bit, and then bringing in the grass green a little bit mixed in with those other two as well on a separate side. So you're gonna have a, probably about six different mixtures of colors on your palette. That is perfectly fine. You can also kind of blend and mix the colors on the canvas as you go. That really helps build a little bit of depth and kind of showcases the colors a little bit better too. Having a little bit of a hill up front here. And you can use that same brush to kind of drag the green into the sand a little bit more too. I may actually redo how some of that sand looks and bring it down some more green but we'll see okay so my camera died here so i'm going to kind of re-show you we're taking that silver not the silver we're taking the sparkly white and the blue and mixing a very light almost princess blue and adding ripples to our island here so kind of line it around your entire island and anywhere it looks like the water would be flowing in certain directions around it. Okay, you stuck around this far. There's a blooper ahead. You're going to want to see it. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe for part three. Bye guys.